Standing on the top now. Well, good day, good day. Welcome to another episode of the Bobby Brown Show. I'm Bobby Brown. How are you doing today? Before we start anything, um, I want you to do two things for me. Um, Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the notification bell, make sure it's on always, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, It's been a while since I've been up here, and uh, I've I've been really putting myself in a position to ask myself, should I go there? Should I go there? Should I talk about... Um, the lineage of Kamala Harris. Is it that important? And I thought about it and I said, yes, it is because she's running like she's black. And we have the black community that's fighting hard for her to be black. When there's one case where I heard her said she was black and that was at the breakfast club and that's because Charlemagne the God put her on the spot. <clears throat> but the question is, is Kamala Harris black? Now, we know about her mother, very smart, intelligent lady when she was alive, pharmaceutical cancer research woman, a Brahmin Indian. I can go into another show about Brahmin Indians. Born in Oakland, didn't grow up in Oakland, grew up in Canada in a predominantly Indian neighborhood. Now, before I go into detail about this particular subject, I want to ask myself a question. We know that she's half Indian, but the question is her father. Now, there's birth certificates out there say her father is labeled as Jamaican. And people here in, black people here in America tend to think that Jamaican is a color. Jamaican is no different from saying American. It's just a region. It's a region where you were born, maybe raised, and you got adopted as a, it's like me, I'm from Florida. I've been born and raised in Florida, born in Panama City, raised in Braden and Sarasota, Florida. I um, have been predominantly a Floridian all my life, but then I moved to California when I was in the Navy. Then I moved to Virginia when I was in the Navy. And I stayed in Virginia for a long time um, because my dad lived there. And you could have pretty much called me a Virginian. I went from Floridian to Virginia. And now I live in New York City and been here over 10 years. I still don't consider myself a New Yorker. Still got a lot of things to learn concerning New York. Love New York. Wouldn't be no, I mean, wouldn't be the best place to be, in my opinion, but just the rent is just too doggone high. <laughs> and I'm looking to move either to Connecticut or Jersey because the rent is too doggone high here. Now, Jamaican. We're going to talk about her Jamaican heritage because we already know about her Indian heritage. We've seen videos about her family talking about her. We've seen her talk about her Indian family and her being Indian multiple occasions. If you go to my TikTok, I got plenty of videos up there concerning her being an Indian. But we're going to explore her Jamaican side because Jamaicans come in various colors. Jamaicans, the largest population of Jamaican or Afro-Jamaicans, those who are African descent, they came here through, um, through the slave trade, through the Atlantic slave trade. And then you have the Indian population, which is the second population. Then you got the Chinese. But you predominantly got Scotch, Irish, and English people who colonized that land. It wasn't mostly Spaniards that colonized that land. But yet there's some Spanish, Latino, Jamaicans. But Afro-Jamaicans pretty much make up the majority. Sad to say, the Afro-Jamaicans are losing their grip on Jamaica, and they're predominantly the leaders, um, the pro- primary people in that land. And um, But... People are coming in, buying up land and roads and hotels and stuff like that when it should be them. But let me get back to the subject about Kamala's Jamaican side. All right, so let me go over here, bring myself over here. And uh, we're going to go through a series of videos. Bear with me, bear with me. And uh, yeah. All right. So Medium came up with an article, July 29th, said enough already with the twisted attempts to weaponize Kamala Harris family tree. It's not weaponized. She's the one weaponizing it. Not us. She's the one going out here acting like she's sister girl, chucks and pros and things like that. Not us. And only talking points is say people say that she always identified as black. Always is a stretch. I only heard her say it one time, and that's only because Charlemagne the God asked her the question, where she was forced to say the answer. In every interview, because we're going to be talking about, we're going to be doing some, what I call, um, black bootlickers anonymous. 
We're going to talk about people who are so, black men who are so gung-ho for Kamala Harris. And look, that's your right. But to look at us and get mad at us because we're not on a Kamala train is worse than people who think we should be on the Trump train. Just because I'm black, that means I'm supposed to be on a plane, Trump train, or a Kamala train. She's using her blackness. She's using her black girl magic, chucks and pearls, ski wee, sorority sister, Howard University. First of all, she got to Howard University based on her being in Canada, almost like an exchange student going from Canada to Howard University. She indulged herself in black culture because probably was fascinated by the black culture. Now, they claim her mother is a civil rights fighter or freedom fighter for black justice, for civil justice. But I don't know any proof of that. That's just what they say. I see a picture where her dad and, and her mom with her in her arms probably but I don't see many pictures of them at a protest. I don't see a video of them at protest. I don't see them talking about um, freedom and rights. I don't see it. Not saying that they do, but this is just how the Democratic Party and most parties do. They try to shape a narrative. They try to tell the story of the candidate and make you, make it noble where you can buy into the candidate. You know, try to make them look like it's just like storytelling and wrestling. So you can buy into the character to try to get the character over. But honestly speaking, I've seen nothing but a few pictures of her and her dad I don't at Berkeley, but I never seen them at a uh, fight the power rally. Which brings me to my next question. Where's her dad? Her dad is a lie. Her dad is a Stanford professor. Um very smart, intelligent, intelligent gentleman, an economic professor. They have taught on African study, but do that make him black? No. There's a plenty of white people that teaches on African study. Where is the cousins? Where is the aunties? Where is the? I mean, on on the Jamaican side, where are they? Where where's dad? Last time I heard from dad is when she went on um, the Breakfast Club and she um, they asked her about um, are you Jamaican? On the on you smoke marijuana? And she said, hey, have. My family is Jamaican. Like, that is a good answer about whether you smoke marijuana. Most Jamaicans don't smoke marijuana. And her dad got upset and, and her dad got upset because she stereotyped Jamaican people. Went off, did an op-ed, talked to, just called her on that. Her and her dad don't have a good relationship. And I kind of believe I know where it came from. Usually when you're married, now you got to understand Kamala Harris' family come from um, Brahmin, which is rich. It's kind of a higher class caste system in India. Her dad was a dignitary. Her granddaddy was a dignitary. So they come from a high class elite society of India. That's how she was able to come to the United States and go to Berkeley because the dad is a dignitary, granddad. Now, I'm quite sure that she was taught that her lineage of Indian is not like those lineage of Indians, like the dark skin. The black looking Indians with the good hair, not the same. So to come to India, and let's say her dad was black. We're going to go through detail and find out whether he is black or not. But let's say he's black for the sake of entertainment. Um, the relationship didn't work out and they broke up. Now, usually it's not the dad that get better. It's usually the dad that do the breaking up. The mom probably was loyal and loved him. And dad was pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky was what they call him. And probably found some other women. I don't know. But they eventually either broke up or got a divorce. But let he broke up. They broke up. Okay. She's mad. She takes them away from Berkeley close to the dad and move all the way to Canada. Thank Quebec somewhere. And lived in the Indian neighborhood from that time to the time she went to college. She didn't spend much time with her father, kind of like Obama. He didn't spend much time with his dad. But usually... <clears throat> when there's a relationship like that where the dad is not consistently in the home, the mother gets bitter. And all you hear is, you're no good daddy. You're no good daddy. You're no good daddy. You're no good daddy. And I come to the conclusion that, that maybe that's why she's not keen on black men. I mean, she dated Willie Brown. I think she was in love with Willie Brown. Uh, Willie Brown was a charming guy. Very wealthy, very successful. And I feel that she felt she made it. But Willie Brown was technically married even though it was separated for a while, but he wasn't doing what he can to get a divorce and be with her. Maybe she got enough of that, started dating Montel William, but at the end of the day, something happened where she began to have a negative look on her dad. You never hear her talk about her dad. It's all about, always about her mother. And again, her mother is a very, very smart, intelligent woman, very strong, um, willed woman. God rest her soul. But you don't hear too much about dad. You don't hear too much about Cousin Soon Soon or Uncle Buck or whatever in Jamaica. You don't hear those stories. And where are those cousins? Where are those descendants? Why we don't 
don't see that side, which makes me suspect. Why we don't see that side? I believe because if we begin to dig in that side, we'll realize that <laughs> they ain't what she's claiming that they are. Or at least what she's causing us to perceive what they are. Because all of this has been perception. Everybody in the news media is fighting for her to be black. And there's no evidence saying she's black. Jamaican is not black. Just because she went to HBCU do not mean you black. You got white people. You got Chinese people. You got all kind of people go to HBCUs. All kind. They have to. Affirmative action is a summer gun. <laughs> and they're in sororities too. You don't just have black, all sister girl sorority. And if you look like you black, you fit in pretty good with the legitimate black sorority system. So, <laughs> I'm looking at all these things. I'm saying, where's the dad at? Is he at a black site where he can't talk? <laughs> where he won't expose her for her or this sham or fraud? Because it looked like a, it feels like a sham or fraud. I don't know why. Now, before you people come up here and saying you must be a Trump guy, I don't give a crap about Trump. I don't. I'm not supporting Trump. I'm not voting for Trump. I'm not MAGA. I look at people's policies. I'm not going to front. I've seen a good few good policies he do have on this platform. I have yet to see policies on Kamala's platform. All I see is a bunch of donating buttons. You go on Trump website, no, no donation button. You can donate, but no donation button in order to go look at the policies. Kamala Harris have yet to see policy because I believe that she's going to run on a hope and change type platform and talk about the things that people want to hear. The Bible call it honey in the ear. I think that's the way it said. She's going to say whatever she needs to say to get people to support support her. Except I'm going to get black, foundational black Americans, their reparation. That's going to be a priority. So we're going to look into this real quick. Um, this article said enough already with the twisted attempts to weaponize Kamala Harris family tree. Megan Smolenyak is the writer. Megan Smolenyak. Let's go look at her. All right. White blonde woman, I guess. She has her own website. Uh, uh, let's say genealogical adventure and storyteller. Well, why don't you, let's go back to the story and hear you what you got to say about Kamala. About Kamala. Uh, Kam Kamala is a, not African name. I know y'all heard of the great Kamala in wrestling. That's not the same thing. That's an Indian name. Once I was a younger youngster, I was playing dumb about something as kids sometimes will. My mother fixed me with a stare and said, Megan, it's one thing to be ignorant, but it's another thing to be proud of it. This embarrassing memory has come flashbacks over the last week as I've tripped across several fiend ignorant stabs at Kamala Harris for supposedly being a descendant from slave owners. We're going to see if it's supposedly uh, Megan. Typical of this is the Daily Mail. So Daily Mail, a conservative right-wing leaning publication. I don't trust them <coughs> no more do I trust NBC. Both of these news outlets are liars. That's why you got to do your research for yourself. Can't listen to anybody else. We're going to deal with you, D.L. Hughley, soon. Kamala Harris' great-great-great-great-grandfather was a notorious Irish slave owner who bought Jamaican plantation and traveled to London to fight abolition, to fight abolition, History claim. It bears to mention that this is just a tired rehash from 2020 when the uh, Dinesh D'Souza, echoed by ex other extremists, came out with the bizarre, bizarre claim that Kamala Harris' father revealed his family is descendants from one of Jamaican's largest slave planters. This means Kamala Harris is a descendant not from slaves, but from slave owners. Now, <clears throat> Donald Lawrence. Kamala Harris' father did say that he come from slave on. His great-great-great-father is Scotch-Irish. We're going to go through this. You're talking about the Brown family. We're talking about the Finnegans, which are part of Joe Biden's legacy, the Finnegans. <laughs> Just because Dinesh D'Souza said it doesn't mean it's not true. Just because somebody make up a bunch of bull crap, I know it's easy to believe he's going to be making bu a bull crap about this, but sometimes people are going to tell the truth. There's only one person that lie all the time, and that's Satan. Everybody has the capability of telling the truth. And just because a right-wing propagandist like D'Souza said it doesn't mean it's not so, because her dad said it. Now, we're going to go look at that. There's so much to unpack here, but let's start with the most glaring in the third decade of the 21st century. To couch this as so-called revelation as some sort of gotcha as an astonishing display of ignorance, racism or let's be real both articles not to speak of social media amplification on the topic buried the lead as if the writers are clueless about the horrors of slavery who said he's clueless even if this was true more on this shortly 
What matters is that at least one of her ancestors was raped, not that there might be an enslaver in the family tree. Who said one of the slavers was raped? You had plenty of slaves that got in relationships with their masters or with family members of the masters for whatever reason. You got some that, I mean, you you can't just say when a a slave master raped. Now, don't get me wrong. Slave masters raped. They raped the women. They raped the men. They raped the little kids. They were despicable. They looked at them as property and they can do whatever they think they want to. It happened. They got pregnant. A lot of times, especially in Florida, those babies end up being gator baits. Bait for gators. They were not allowed that baby to be born. And they use old school method of abortions to try to get rid of the baby. She's assuming that her great, great, great grandmother was a slave and that she was raped. And she have no evidence of that. Articles, not. let me go back to this and say articles not to speak of. Let me see. Sat, um, articles not to speak of social media amplification on this topic buried the lead, blah, blah, blah. What matters is that at least one of her ancestors were raped. Who says that? Where's your proof on this, lady? Not that there might be an enslaver in the family tree. Sadly for Africans and Caribbean Americans, this is pronounced reality, legacy of slavery, and its inherent depravity. True, Africans who end up being Caribbeans or native Caribbeans, like native Indians to those lands, oftentimes when that land got colonized, they dominated those people. That is true. But that don't mean that it was a slave that got raped. You have no evidence of this lady. You're just making this up. You're just assuming. DNA testing has revealed that on average. DNA testing revealed that on average. This ain't got nothing to do with her. This is just what she uh, lo looking at through DNA testing. African Americans have almost uh, a quarter European ancestors. The percentage would vary somewhat for those who roots in Jamaica where slavery ended in 1838, well before, before it ended with us in America. <laughs> But given their plantation system, the only question is the exact figure. Now, their plantation system was a little bit different from here. They did have indentured service, servants. They did have hired hands coming from other various parts of the nation. They did have um, sharecroppers at that time uh, from various cultures. But let me get back to this. What might that be? Because enslavers routinely raped those who enslaved, you know who else did? Their sons, their fathers, their uncles, and cousins. Add to their foremans, visitors, and any number of white men, black men, had the misfortune of being exposed to. Black women had the fortune of We get this. We know this. Lady, it was your people that was doing this. So who are you talking to? Okay? It's your lineage that was doing this. So we know these things happen, but doesn't mean it happened in this case. And let's say it did. It doesn't mean the, it's, gone, it's a black person that got raped. Because enslavers routinely rape those they enslaved, you know, who else did? Blah, blah, blah. We already been over that. The motive for all this is a mix of domination and control, uncontrained lust and profit. After all, if a victim became pregnant, the enslavers grew his inventory, more free labor, or another person to sell. To pluck out the features of an enslaver as a possible ancestor and erase the countless others who endured slavery is just one more example of cherry picking pattern to prevalent among extremists. This ain't got nothing to do with extremists, lady. We we here on the chocolate side of town, black people, some in the Democratic Party, some who voted Democrat, just say I'm not going to be hoodwinked. We got hoodwinked by the Barack Obama story and he did nothing for us. You're not going to trot this lady out like she's black. We're going to smell her out. We're going to sniff her out. That playbook don't work no more. Just because you put a woman of color in the, in the, in the, pool, in the front don't mean we're going to buy into her. We gonna check her out. We gonna pull a card. We gonna sniff her. We gonna ask where your mother from, where your daddy from, where your grandmother from, where your daddy from. We gonna ask that. Where you were raised? Who raised you? We gonna ask that because that shaped your mentality on how you're gonna lead. The bottom line of this particular article is this lady trying to make excuse say, y'all me coming up with this she ain't black thing um, that her dad, a granddaddy is a slave owner, and it's probably so because the granddaddy was a rape or rapist. He raped. Great, her great great grandmother you don't know that and you're assuming that let's say he did rape her you're assuming that great great grandmother was a black woman doesn't mean anything you ain't proved that this whole article you haven't proved that it's true that kamala harris father donald j harris stated my roots go back with my lifetime and my parental grandmother miss chrissy nene christina brown descendant of hamilton brown who is on record as a plantation slave owner and founder of brown town in an article of Jamaican Global. <clears throat> so she didn't say he was lying. So she got the article of the man saying that it's true 
that I come from a line of slave owners. Now, I'm going to see if I can go to that particular article because I I don't remember him saying that she was raped. Maybe he has the proof that he re, he's reluctantly to share. So she's going to say that he's reluctantly to share that his great-great-grandmother was raped. No, if he knew his great-great-grandmother, most of us would not hide that. Most of us got family members who in our lineage that was raped by slave masters, we got it. We call that the light-skinned side of our family with the blue eyes and the green eyes and the red eyes. This means nothing. The lady just admitted that, yeah, he said that. Yeah, he said that I come from a line of slavery. So whether Denise said it or not, you just confirm whether Denise is said it or not. If Denise, whatever his name, <laughs> DD, <laughs> the propagandist, author if he said it you just confirm what he said is true so it's not just a right wing talking point this is donald harrison saying this to himself saying it himself and you just meant it admit it he talked about his paternal grandmother miss chrissy nini christina brown christiana Chris, christiana brown descendant descendant of hamilton brown who was on record of plantation oh now we're going to go to that in a minute um i can go through this it was for example many americans still believe that the myth and the names were changed to Ellis Island. They weren't, but the moment you say so, the public people will come out of woodworks and dignantly telling you that you're wrong, all because Grandpa, t Grandpa told him so. He had not done so mere 14 years of birth of his granddaughter. Millions of America would now be geared to vote for Kamala Brown. All right, so, you know, and these some, uh, you know, birth certificates of uh, Nene. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, uh, but we're going to go there. It said birth record of Oscar Wilde Brown, a.k.a. Oscar Joseph Harris, a Jamaican civil registration, 1880 to 1999 family research. He was born as Oscar Wilde Brown. But if you scrutinize the comments on the right, here we go with the comments on the right, it states that his name was changed to Oscar Joseph Harris, presumably in recognition of his father, Joseph Alexander Harris, had not done so mere 14 years before the birth of his grandmother, mother millions of Americans would now be geared up to vote for Kamala Brown. You note that Oscar's mother is recorded as Christina Brown. Kamala's father, Donald, remembers her well and says that his grandmother died in 1951. Given that he would have been 12 at the time, I lean toward trusting his recollection we often remember how old we were when we lost a loved one, which makes it possible to estimate an approximately year, approximate year that records that record is easily to verify online. Right name, right year, Brown Town Parish. Here's the death record of Christina Brown, Jamaica. Note that this documentation says that she was 70, even setting aside the fact that Donald's original claim that she was 62 when she died. A young person is more likely to remember their own age when they lost a grandmother than the grandmother's age. Genealogists know to second guess round numbers. Sure, she might be 70, but maybe she was 73 or 66. And this is where the true obstacles go. Oh, whatever, whatever, lady. Uh, let's get to the point. Try to prove that she's black. Hamilton Brown, Hamilton Brown, white slave owner. Uh, so what are we dealing with is clickbait garbage that tries to blame Kamala Harris for uh, barbar barbarity some of her female ancestors somehow survived. Proves nothing, lady. If you bought a read past the end headline of Daily News, I'm, I'm not thinking about Daily News. Rudder's fact check have said that Kamala is likely to be a descendant of Rudder's fact check. You don't trust fact checkers. That she's likely, didn't say she was, that she's likely to be a descendant of both slave and slave owners. Everybody most likely be. We already know that most black people that's been here post-slavery, the land has been here post-Civil War, are descendants of slaves, and some of them have had family members that have been raped by slave masters and their family members and some actually have relationships with them thinking that this is gonna give them a better life if they can get close to the house or whatnot and some of them made themselves available not rape but consensually to the people in the house to stay in the house trying to do whatever they can to survive but it doesn't prove this here so fact checkers have said that kamala is likely to be a descendant of both slave and slave owners. don't mean it's proof it is uncommon for african americans or people of caribbean heritage to be a descendant from slave owners <clears throat> this is because it was common for slave masters to rape their fish she's going back to the rape thing not every slave master was raping people now we had slave masters raping people but not every slave master were raping people and you did have slave masters actually had relationships consensual we call those slaves they got them a zaddy and they figure it's going to help better them on that plantation 
whatever I can do to kind of ease this heat off of me. And I heard life is good in the big house versus being on the field. But this whole article is basically a nothing burger. She proved nothing. Her case is nine times 10. Oh, stop it with this weaponizing. The woman is black. You don't know that. Well, I know that because, um, you know, majority of Jamaicans has slave owners. And, you know, her dad said um, his lineage go back to slave owners. And that's probably because one of the slave owners probably raped his great, great, grandmother. Who says that? Where's your proof of that? You're assuming. Rudders, the fact checkers, assuming. No definites. Let me go to another article. Here's Jamaican Global. Guess what? They updated this. Talking about Kamala's Jamaican heritage. This is by Reflections on My Jamaican Father by Donald J. Harris. Kind of like um, Barack Obama's memoir. As a child growing up in Jamaica, I often heard it said by my parents and family friends, remember when you come, come from this day, I continue to retain a deep social awareness and strong sense of identity, which... The grassroots Jamaican philosophy fed me. As a father, I naturally sought to develop the same sensibility of my two daughters. Born and bred in America, Mala was the first in line to have it planted. Maya came two years later and had ever advantage of an older sibling as mentor. It is for them to say truly, truthfully now, not me. What if anyone of value carried from the early experience, blah, blah, blah. Let me go down here. Uh, big regrets that they did not come to know very well the two most influential women in my life, Miss Chrissy and Miss Iris, as everybody called them. These are the many ways and stories about these women and heritage that gave us. Uh, Chrissy's grandma, I think Miss Iris, was um, a family friend. Uh, my roots go back um, within my lifetime to my paternal grandmother, Missy Christy Nene Christian Brown, a descendant of Hamilton Brown, who is on record as a plantation and slave owner of founders of Brown Town. Now, this man says it, and if he says it, then D'Souza is right. Her father, her great 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 grandfather, was a slave owner. My great great grandfather was not a slave owner. So you can't pin that on everybody, lady. My roots go back within my lifetime paternal grandmother, Chris Nene Hamilton Brown, on record of slave owner, blah, blah, blah. And to my maternal grandmother, Miss Iris Nene Iris Finnegan, a farmer, a educator from a nun town and Iverness ancestry unknown to me. Let me go back to this. Hamilton Brown, who was on record plantation slave owners and founder of Brown Town, and to my maternal grandmother, Miss Iris Nene Iris Finnegan. Finnegan, Scotch Irish name. Now, slaves didn't have last names. They got branded. I don't know about in Jamaica, but in the United States, they got branded, but they never had a last name. I mean, they tagged them, but they didn't have a last name, pretty much. I mean, they. You know, you got branded as part of that plantation, like the Washington plantation, but your name wasn't Washington. You probably took on Washington um, because you had no, you because they took your real name away from you. Iris Finnegan, a farmer, then say a slaver, then say she was a slave, a farmer and educator, a farmer and educator from Annantown and Iverness ancestry unknown to me. The Harris name comes from my paternal grandfather, Joseph Alexander Harris. Show you a picture of that guy soon. Landowner, agriculture produce exporter, mostly pimento and of all spice, who died in 1939, one year after I was born, and is buried in the churchyard at Magnificent Angelican Anglican Church, which Hamilton Brown built in Brownstown, and where as a child I learned the Catholicism was Baptist and confirmed and served as an acolyte. So according to Donald Harris, he didn't act like no slave. He didn't, I mean, he grew up pretty decent. His father, his grandfather, landowner, agriculture produced exporter, mostly pimentos and spice. He as a child, he learned Catholicism, was baptized and confirmed, and he served as an acolyte. But my grandmother had the strongest influence of my early upbringing, not to exclude the course of the influence of my dear Miss Burrow and loving father, Mass Oscar. My dear Miss Burrow and loving father, Miss Oscar. Miss Chrissy was a disciplinary reserved as a stern, reserved and stern in look, firm with the strap, but capable of most enduring and genuine acts of love and affection. Now you see this lady right here. She looks black, right? Who is this? Lady? Miss Chrissy dressed up in her unusual finery standing in front of her home in Orange Steel, Paris, where I spent my early years. Now, I got another picture, Miss Christie, you're going to see. And you tell me, is this the same lady? Now, mind you, this lady right here. This is Kamala Harris' great-grandmother. This is Donald Harris' grandmother, Miss Iris. Miss Iris is the grandmother. Now, we're going to talk about Miss Iris because Miss Iris is mixed. We're going to talk about that in a minute. We're going to go back over here. Now, mind you, 
This article was updated 1-2019-1-14-2019. She sparked my interest in economics and politics simply by observing and listening to her on the daily. She owned, she owned and operated the popular dry goods store on the business main street leading away from the famous market in the center of brown town. Every day after school, I would go to her shop to wait for the drive home to Orange Hill after she closed the shop. I was here that she was, um, it was here that she was in her grove, groove, while I engaged in lively and sometimes intense conversation with all who came into the shop about issues of the day. Business was front and center for her, a profession, a family tradition that she embodied and carried with purpose, commitment, pride, and dignity. Next to of devotion to the church that, as often said, her ancestors built. She never paid much attention to the business of the farm of Orange Hill. Her sons took care of, this, uh, care of that side of, my, of the family business. Her constant focus was on issues that affected her business of buying and selling them. And by the way, her ancestors built don't mean that she was a slave, <clears throat> that it was slaves. Uh, issued the required understanding and keeping up with the news, a task where she pursued with gusto. She was also fully in charge of domestic affairs in our home and, of course, had raised eight children of her own at an early age. There was a daily dial of politics as well. She was a great admirer of Busta, Sir William Alexander Bustamante, a chief minister in the col- colonial government and a leader of the Jamaican Labor Party. She claimed with conviction and pride to be a labor right, a member of the JLP, were called. And for the interest reason that she, as she argued, labor is the heart of everything in life. Little did I know what I learned later is studying economics that my grandmother was espousing her independent discovery dis, um, version uh, of labor theory and value. Her philanthropic side, got some money. Her philanthropic side, you can't be no philanthropist if you ain't got no money. So obviously she had an inheritance. Shunned through every Easter and Christmas when she had my sister Enid and me packaged buns and cheese and, and favorite Jamaican Easter fare and other goodies in little boxes that we carried and delivered to families in the area around our home. She died in 1951 at the age of 70. Her departure left me and then only 14 with a deep sense of sadness and loss. Miss Iris, mother of eight children too, was the sweet, see these are two different people. Miss Iris, mother of eight children too, was the sweetest and gentlest person one could meet. But underneath it was a tough farming woman who ran the cane farm at Thatch Walk near Town, jointly owned with her husband, Mr. Christie. She was always ready to go to church Sunday and preach and teach about the revelations she saw approaching the world at that time during and after the World War II, according to the Bible. I spent summers with her, roaming around the cane fields, fascinating, uh, getting tired, y'all. I spent summers with her, roaming around cane field, fascinated by the mechanical operation of cane, juicing by old methods, wooden pole, blah, 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 blah. He would drink a cup of juice, raw sugar, Coke, Pepsi, blah, blah, blah. It was a joy and learning experience for me to hang out with the workers on the cane farm. Seeing see them wield a cutlass, a machete, with such flourish and finesse, listening to their stories of exploits, some too X-rated for me to repeat, and sit with them as they prepared their meal by putting everything in one big Dutch pot, cooking it over an open fire in the field and serving it out a big banana leaf with all us eating sitting there. Looking back now, I can say with certainty that all do credit to Miss Iris, that it was this early intimate exposure of operation of sugar industry at a local level of small-scale production with family labor, free wage labor, coupled with my growing curiosity and how these things came to be that led me to once start reading about the history of Jamaica to a closer study to the sugar industry. I came then to understand the origins of the system of global production commerce based on slave labor with Jamaicans as a key component of that system from its very start. Miss Iris died in 1981 at a grand old age of 93. I graved over the loss of someone so dear and close to me. She is shown in the photo here taken in 1966, just back from church proudly holding in her lap Kamala, a confident in her firm prediction, even in the future, achieving uh, achievements of her great, great granddaughter after giving blessings to making making a cross with her finger on the child's forward head. Now, not much said about this lady right here, just a headline from the news article. He did not say anything about this lady, but we're assuming that this is Miss Christie and this is Miss 
Iris. Miss Chrissy is a Finnegan, I believe. We're going to go into this some more. All right, so Miss Iris with great-great-granddaughter Kamala Harris. From the start, I strive to retrace for my children the path which I have traveled from Miss Judah's primary school to Top Road in Brownstown to Park School Elementary, just around the corner to Titchfield High and Port Antonio to University College of West Indies, then to Berkeley where Kamala was born, to Illinois where Maya was born, and subsequently to Cambridge University, Wisconsin at Yale and Stanford. Throughout this retracting, tracing my message to them from the lessons I've learned along the way was that the sky's the limit, don't say nothing about Herod, express and command a favorite command of Miss Christie, privilege. All right, so these are some of the parishes up here. Um, I think this is it. I don't think he say um, anything else concerning this. This is Donald with um, uh, his um, his granddaughter Mina and Kamala. This is him right here, all grown up now. Kamala is carving away for herself in America. Mina is doing the same with her own route, as is her mother, Maya. Not to be ignored, Lil Mara, the first two great granddaughters. And this is him with the babies. Cute little babies. All right, so fact check. Kamala Harris is long identified as black contrary to Trump. We've seen videos of her identifying herself as Asian Pacific um, Indian woman. Talked about her Indian heritage more so than she do about her black side, which makes us question whether she's black. The story I went through didn't mean she's black. Because I remember, remember I told you, the population of Jamaican is varies, predominantly Afro-Jamaicans, but you got a lot of Indian Jamaicans. That's the second pop population in Jamaica. Jamaica. Republican president candidate Donald Trump said at an annual gathering of black journalists on Wednesday that his Democratic rival Kamala Harris had downplayed her black heritage in the past, which she has. The narrative, which quickly spread on social media, similar posts were fact-checked by Rutgers when she became the first black and Asian woman to serve on the second highest office in the country. This and other misinformation about Harris resurfaced since she launched a White House bid. This is not misinformation. You're talking about when she became, ran for president, she identified as black. We're talking about before that. They didn't fact check that. This fact check, fact checked by Rutgers in 2020, not fact checked by Rutgers in 2016, 2018. Don't start at 2020. We know she tried, we know she identified, uh, well, still, one time I heard her on radio, identify as black in 2020 but one time don't mean always has long so stop it man let's go to another article washington post jamaican connection kamala father is proud a proud islander who made sure his daughters knew their heritage he did not spend too much time with them girls he did not now these kids right here as plain as any in this day now on the summer even 1978 Donna Harris took his two young daughters to the Greek Theater in Berkeley, California. To their first concert, Kamala, the girl who would become vice president, was the eldest, 13, and she watched Bob Marley and the Wellers sing in Sway Outdoor Arena campus of University of California at Berkeley. She found herself mesmerized. We sat up at the top of the back of the theater, and I watched the performance. I was completely awed, Harris said in an email in the post. Watched the post. To this day, I know the lyrics to nearly every Bob Marley song. The experience was meant to be more of a musical. Her father, a prom prominent Jamaican economic professor teaching at Stanford, was trying to imbue his two American-born girls with a sense of pride in their roots. Like Harris says, Marley was from a parish on the north coast of the island of St. Anne's. Marley had a little yardy in him too. My father, like so many Jamaicans, has immense pride in our Jamaican heritage and Still, that same pride in my sister and me, Harris wrote. We love Jamaica. He taught us the history and where we're from, the struggles and the beauties of the Jamaican people, and the richness of the culture. Most of the time, Kamala Harris and her sister Maya spent time growing up with their mother. I won't stop there. Most of the time, Kamala Harris and her sister Maya spent growing up with her their mother. The consequence of a bitter divorce and a tough custody battle. Shamala Goplin, a cancer researcher who grew up in India, had taken a job at McGill University a little over a year ago before the concert. Now, remember what I said? You're talking about a bitter divorce. You're talking about um, a custody battle, tough custody battle. I told you that nine times out of ten, her mother did not want her around daddy. And she had to fight that man tooth and toe, or that man had to fight tooth and toe now toenail to spend time with his daughters. I strongly believe she was dog determined, dog determined to teach her the Brahmin way. Not just the Indian way, but the Brahmin Indian way. And the Brahmin Indian way is kind of like the redneck way back in the 1980s, I mean back into the 1800s. Now let's go to the next article. A guide to Kamala Harris family tree. Now when I look up 
Kamala Harris family tree, they always go down. They don't go back. They go forward. So I looked at this and it's pretty much going forward. Donna Harris is going down. It's not going back. We're not going back in Shamala's history. We're not going back into Donald Harris history. It's going forward with the people like Doug and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, with this mess. All right, so renewed focus of Harris Roots. The Irish Echo. This is Irish Echo. This is an Irish newspaper. The oldest Irish American newspaper in the United States. Renewed focus on Harris Roots. The Irish Echo, it seems, was the only publication to point out in 2020 that former Vice President Joseph R. Biden, the Democratic Party president nominee and his vice president nominee, Senator, Senator Kamala Harris, has shared a family name. Harris was born, Harris was to become the first ever female U.S. Vice President January 2020, said that she and Biden were in the terms of their family values. She said that Biden and her were in terms of of their family values, cut from the same cloth, although she likely didn't have anything specific in mind. They cut from the same cloth because both of them come from the legacy of the Finnegans. The president is the great-grandson of Owen Finnegan, who left behind his father, John Finnegan, in the country, Lao. Now, we just met Iris Finnegan, the lady that was on the lap of Kamala Harris, Christina Brown, Nene. She was part of the Brown family, Irish connections. The president is the great son of Owen Finnegan. In 2018 essay of a Jamaican publication, the vice president, Father Donna Harris, revealed that the two most important women in his life was his maternal grandmother, Miss Iris Nene Iris Finnegan, adding ancestry unknown to me, and his paternal grandmother, paternal grandmother, his maternal and his paternal. Now, the lady that you saw, the uh, one that looked black, that was the paternal grandmother, Chris, Christy, Christy, Christina Brown. And his maternal grandmother is Iris Finnegan. Okay. Jim McNiff, a Boston-based amateur genealogist and, and Irish echo source, begged to differ in the former case, not about the ancestry unknown part of it, but the knee. He suggested that Miss Iris was born Ora Allen in January 1908, Mary Patrick A. Finnegan. Keyword. Let me go back to that. Jim McNiff, a Boston-based amateur genealogist and Iris Echo source. In other words, he he's a source of news for the Iris Echo newspaper. He said that it's not the ancestry is not unknown, part of it, but the knee. He suggested that Miss Iris was a born Miss Iris was born Aura Allen, and in January 1908 she married Patrick A. Finnegan. So she married a Irish man, the mixed race son of a man from Ireland of the same name. Dublin-based papers are catching up last week, and the Irish Independent mentioned our report of four years ago that the Irish Times had referred to the coincidence of the Finnegan name. The Independent report says. A little misleading that Ms. Mc, Mr. McNiff's source for these claims is a series of letters from Jesuit priests who had visited Jamaica. It added that while Harris probably has some Irish roots, the theories being advanced were hard to prove and cavout it. However, reports, it's not hard to prove when the daddy says it. <laughs> How reports on the subject of the vice president roots inevitably referred to the possibility that the other grandmother, Miss Chrissy, was a descendant from country, from county, Atrium born slave owner Hamilton Brown. So you got the paternal that's a that's a Finnegan that married a Finnegan man allegedly, and then you got the Brown, which is related to Hamilton Brown. However, reports on the subject of the vice president roots inevitably referred to the headline Kamala Harris' great 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 grandfather was a notorious Irish slave owner who bought Jamaican plantation Jamaican plantation in traveled to London to fight abolition history claim. All right, let's just assume that's true. We don't have nothing saying that it wasn't, that he wasn't. The vice president father, retired Stanford University economist in his 2018 essay states the fact, the connection to Hamilton Brown, who is on record as a plantation slave owner and founder of Brownstown. That's from the daddy. The Irish Times, though, in the piece of this month, which cited the research, Stephen McCracken from Northern Ireland, the historian, referred to the mail hand, uh, headline, said that the genealogical line has not been comprehensively proven, but the daddy said he knows this. As to the other possibility connection, could Donald Harris not have heard about the more recent Irish ancestry just a few generations back? Well, yes, it's quite possible, or he might have been told about it as a child and a youth and then forgotten the finer details. His essay is focused on two women. We 
he knew and their work accomplished and personalities. And it is not an attempt to write a family history. He had particularly interest in the Jamaican role in the world of sugar production and is so folklore about the distant ancestry who might have been a slave owner fit into the overall story, who might have been. He was, <laughs> according to him. Also, while Harris refers to the paternal grandfather, there's no indication that Miss Iris' named husband is, is, uh, is his maternal grandfather. If she married a second and possibly a third time, then first union, a long dead husband, is more likely to have been forgotten in the midst of time. You're going into semantics now. <laughs> Another reason might be the change in the religion. Conversation was an issue with the Reverend Patrick F.S. Murley, S.J., a striking figure in the religious history of Jamaica for more than a quarter century. As a Fordham newspaper described him upon his death in 1922, and so has so he wasn't merely a visitor, suggested in the Irish independence story. So the bottom line is you got two sides, his paternal and his maternal grandmother. Now the forget Finnegan side, of course, they're alleging that there was a marriage between uh, Mr. Finnegan and Miss Nini, because her last name is Finnegan. And it is alleged that Miss Nini is not black, that Miss Nini is Indian. And Miss ne Miss Nini, the Indian woman, married Mr. Finnegan. Because not that many Finnegans were marrying black slaves, but they were open to marrying somebody more Caucasian like them. Of course, po political facts going to get their two cents in. Who's fact checking the fact checkers? You know, they. All right, let's see what they got to say. <laughs> Looking at claims Kamala Harris is a descendant of slave owners. In 2018, Donald J. Harris' father said in an essay that he is a descendant of Hamlin Brown, Irish man who enslaved people in Jamaica. We found the user created lineage of the family research seemingly connects Brown to Harris family, but we we couldn't cooperate with it with no official records. Maybe you shouldn't have access to it. The family trail of family search indicated that Harris is a descendant of a woman named Jesse and Prince, who was listed on the birth death as a laborer. Laborer doesn't mean slaves. And Jesse and Prince ain't nowhere in the story of her father. Laborer was a term lent to emancipate a slave uh, no, they were not. The grandmother talked about laborers. All laborers were not slaves. You had indentured service. You had people that came from prison to do some prison work, which is what we call now the private prison systems. But they were prisoners that did work on the field. And then you had some that just came to make some money and to build a new life. You had a lot of Indians come to Jamaica and do work. They were all considered laborers. Of course, people are going to try to blow this off. Look at this guy. I have news for you about the descendants of his slave Africans, how twit damn near all of, all of us had Hamilton Brown in our family tree. So all of you did little research. All of you guys did a DNA test and find out you're part of Hamilton's family tree. Get out of here. You are not her. I trust her daddy more than you. All right, so I had the family tree here. All right, so let's look at this for a second. All right, so we have here Kamala Harris, her dad, Donald Jasper Island. And we're just going to focus on, we know her mom was full-blooded native, uh, full-blooded and broad and Indian. And we're not going to get into that. <coughs> Grandfather's diplomat. But Harris, Donald Harris was born of Oscar Joseph Harris and Burl Christian Finnegan. Harris come from the brown side. So this is the side that is alleged to be, um, you know, um, Indian and Scotch. This side is alleged to be um, Irish and um, uh, your um, England. I mean, India. Burl Christie Finnegan had an Indian legacy. All right. So let's see if we can get a picture of um, the granddad. Here we go. So Donald Jasper, Kamala, Donald, Oscar Joseph, his grandfather. We don't have any information about his too much about his mother over here, Burl Finnegan. So you see two people right here, a slave, not a slave descendants, but uh, of uh, European heritage. These lead right back to Hamilton Brown and these lead back to the Finnegans. So you're looking at Oscar Joseph Harris, his dad, dad is Joseph Alexandra Harris and Christina Ellen. L.A. Brown. His parents is Samuel Constant Harris, and we don't know who the mother is, but Christy Brown's side is Hamilton Brown and Mary Movina Brown. So there is no, 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 there is no rape here. There's a marriage here. There's a marriage here. And you go far back, Hamilton Brown, Kate Williams had Hamilton Brown Jr. and Mary Movina Brown gave birth to Christy Ellie Brown. Christy Ellie Brown gave birth to Oscar Joseph, which is Donald Harris grandfather i mean father now this is supposed to be um uh, now we don't have any information on this side yet 
Um, but over here, Burl Finnegan, you got Or Allen right here. That's um, the one that had um, uh, Kamala in her arms. You got Patrick Finnegan, who married Or Allen Finnegan, Iris Finnegan. Both of them, no rape. Both of them gave birth to Burl. And Burl and Oscar gave birth to Donald Jasper. Now, we don't know if Miss Christie were married to Joseph Harris, I don't know that, um, but they did give birth to Donald Jasper. Uh, Patrick Finnegan, Miss Ora Iris Finnegan, married. We don't have too much genealogy on the rest of her, but she is known to be an Indian woman. And um, then we go to Patrick Finnegan and Mary Watson, who gave birth to Patrick Alhana Finnegan. So we're looking at the legacy, the lineage. Now I tell people, you can go look at the family tree. Not every laborer in Jamaica was black. Jamaican heritage is very huge. Watch this. You are uh, part of black culture. I be believe I'm a part of the Jamaican culture. Okay. okay. What's the difference to you? Mm. The difference to me is that what is the black culture, you cannot just define black culture as black culture because it, 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 it varies. I relate with the Jamaican culture because it's culture that I grew up in. You know, we have black British culture, so that's a different thing. But to me, black British culture is a merge of like Jamaican, Caribbean and, and Africa and England together. Mm. That, that, that makes the black British culture. That's what I would say. Mm. So a Yardi is a white Jamaican, probably coming from Irish or Scotch-Irish descent. You got a lot of Jamaicans that look white, but you got them. They, 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 they could be light-skinned. They, some of them are literally white. You could tell their heritage goes back to probably the colonial English or um, Irish or Scotch-Irish or Scottish lineage. That's a Yardi. Let's go to this article. I like this article right here. Matter of fact, it's 11 minutes. Fair use. That I'm going to be answering in today's video. For some quick background, I am Jamaican. I'm first generation Canadian. Both of my parents are born in Jamaica, but I, I consider combine. myself Jamaican because that's just the culture I grew up around and in. I'm a curious person, so I've always kind of wondered where Jamaicans are really from. I'm aware of the slave trade and that like my ancestors are from Africa but to me that was just too broad and I'm also aware that Jamaica like our population is made up of you know different ethnicities and backgrounds for numerous reasons and I'm like where are those people from like what's going on all these different ethnicities and races from you know obviously the Afro Jamaicans to the Chinese Jamaicans to Middle Eastern Jamaicans Ooh. Indian Jamaicans Middle Eastern. so Indians. I want to know exactly where we are from and Middle Eastern Indian Jamaicans, the Yardies, white Jamaicans, mixed Jamaicans, white, black, white Indians, white um, Arabs, white Chinese, black Chinese, black Arabs. Hey, people love who they love. They they crossbreed. It happens. Don't mean rape had to be involved. And what brought all of these different um, ethnicities, races to the island of Jamaica? The very first people to inhabit the island of Jamaica were the Tainos, who are the indigenous people of Jamaica. So they originally arrived by canoe from Belize, as well as the Yucatan Peninsula. And the so you got the Tainos who came there by boat close by and they were natives of jamaicans and that's a lineage that probably crossbreed it the taino people are also found in the dominican republic haiti and puerto rico i hear them reference their taino heritage and culture often so way after the tainos inhabited jamaica which was then known as zamaica zamaca which was a taino word for um land of wood and water which is pretty pretty cool and you know I love the original name I wish Jamaica had kept it but you know colonizers so the very right, first right. Europeans to arrive in Jamaica were the Spanish in May of 1494 so so Spanish came and arrived first you know Spanish arrived and did a lot over there in the um, Caribbean Florida Caribbean um, going through the Panama Canal and and pretty much um, uh, Central America in South America and pretty much reside there. There was that was essentially Christopher Columbus and his crew of colonizers. The European colonizers arrived and practically wiped out the entirety of the Taino population with their foreign European diseases. To me, it's just insane. Like, what kind of diseases could you be bearing that can wipe out an entire population? Like, 
This is why going forward, careful about what you allow this government to put in you because they are trying to do population control. I heard Kamala Harris talk about population control and I'm going to show you that video soon. But um, people are trying to control the population and that's exactly what Christopher Columbus and a lot of a lot of colonial colonializers did do whatever they can to get these people off the land so we can have it kind of like what it looked like they're doing in Gaza, kind of like what they're doing in Jerusalem, Israel, kind of like what they're doing uh, in Palestine. I can't get you off with no diseases, but we'll mow the lawn if we have to. That's gross. The very first Spanish settlement was first established in 1523 and it is the area that we still know as Spanish Town in Jamaica today. Now here's when the African history in Jamaica begins when the Spanish colonizers brought over millions of slaves from West Africa to Jamaica. Ibibio and the oil account for 40%, 40%, nearly half of the slaves that were shipped to Jamaica between 1700 and 1800. Who the Maroon people are or what they are, they were um, slaves who rebelled, and including many of the Maroon people as Coromantis. So those are actually people from the Akan culture, which is presently known as Ghana. So quick history lesson for those of you who don't know who the Maroon people are or what they are. They were... Um, Maroons were not just isolated to one uh, legacy. It's a name. It has a meaning to it. Slaves who rebelled and went into the hills and kind of made their own society that was closed off from all European invasion and influence and they fought the Europeans many times and were just non-compliance and you know ultimately um, were a big part in fighting for our freedom and independence. Jamaica's population is also made up of the Indians from India, um, Chinese people, Syrian slash Lebanese people as well as some workers from Germany and Ireland came over to the island eventually so we are essentially an amalgamation of all of those ethnic groups but for the majority we are of West African descent so the Europeans that arrived in Jamaica later on were primarily Germans Irish people as well as Scottish people and they came as workers and um, there's actually a community in Jamaica that is called Seaford Town that is filled with descendants of those workers so so not all of the white people in Jamaica are direct descendants of slave owners. Some of them are descendants of white people from Europe who just came to work. So the Asian immigrants from India came as indentured workers. Um, brief history lesson once. Like I said before, a lot of the Indian people came. They were not slaves. They were workers. They were indentured workers. And a lot of time, the the Europeans and the Afros breed it with the Indians. Some of them breed it with the Chinese. Um, I mean, it is what it is. And it is still speculated that um, that side of um, Donald Harris and out of Donald Harris' own memoirs and out of his own mouth, his lineage is Indian and Scotch Irish on both sides. Well, let's keep going. Slavery was abolished in Jamaica. The plantation owners, the colonizers, they still needed people to work for them, to work their land, to make money for them. So they um, pretty much had a bunch of workers from India come over. It wasn't called slavery this time, it was called indentured work. So essentially, like I said, they um, pretty much had a bunch of workers from India come over. It wasn't called slavery this time, it was called indentured work. So they um, pretty much had a bunch of workers from India come over. It wasn't called slavery this time, it was called indentured work. So essentially, there were Indians there, they did work. Sometimes people fall in love, sometimes people get married, and sometimes they crossbreed. Slavery was over. White supremacy was still prevalent, but in some cases, sometimes people love getting away. We can't chalk everything up to rape. Through that lineage I showed you, most of everybody in that lineage were married. Somebody took on somebody's name, and it's from Donald Lawrence's own experience. These people were business owners. They were dignitarians. He was an acolyte. His family ran grocery stores, and they were philanthropists, and they gave food to the community. Everybody wasn't downtrodden, old lowly slaves being raped by master. 
I don't know what to do. No, no. There are a lot of Indians. The biggest population in Jamaica are the Indians, not Afro-Jamaicans. Afro-Jamaicans are number one, but there was Indians. And during that time, the population wasn't as big as it was back then. And yes, like she said, an Indian population came through and resided there. History lesson, once slavery was abolished in Jamaica, the plantation once it was abolished. Plantation owners, the colonizers, they still needed people to work for them, to work their land, to make money for them. So they um, pretty much had a bunch of workers from India. Hamilton Brown, the Finnegans. They come over, it wasn't called slavery this time, it was called indentured work. Um, brief history lesson, once slavery was abolished in Jamaica, the plantation owners, the colonizers, they still needed people to work for them, to work their land. And who worked their land, sister? To make money for them. To make money for them, who did it? So they um, pretty much had a bunch of workers from India come over. It wasn't called slavery this time. It was called indentured work. So essentially work that you would do and in return you would get paid crumbs, pennies. Yeah, the conditions weren't um, ideal at all. And eventually, some years later, workers came from what is now known as Lebanon. Um, Jamaicans commonly refer to Lebanese people as Syrians, so you'll probably hear a lot of, you know, Jamaican people referring to having Syrian ancestry. Yeah, those are the Lebanese people that came over to Jamaica to work. So yes, that is where Jamaican people come from. Hey. That's enough of that. All right, so I'm going to close by this. Um, there were a lot of Indo, um, um, the original Aryan race uh, came from Indo Aryans from India. Indians, there was a segment of Indians and what you call Indo Aryans that was the original Aryan race of people. Um, and that's people like Gandhi and all that. Gandhi was no friend of black people. And he was not a friend of dark skinned uh Indian people. He was an Arrow Indo Aryan Indian, which was part of a caste system just like the Brahmin Indians. And a lot of Indo Aryan um Indians came to Jamaica. So in closing, the situation, why it does it should not matter whether Kamala Harris is black, Asian, Indian, red, yellow, black, white, they're precious in the sight. It's about your policies and your ability to lead. It's about your record, past, present, and future. And honestly speaking, if you're a man of faith like me, it's who lines up with the tenets of your faith. Who's gonna push the will of God instead of will of man? And that's how I that's how I'm guided in my voting pattern. You don't have to be guided like that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. It doesn't matter to me. God forgives you. God give you a new slate. Man may not forgive you. Man not give you a new slate. But if God call you, can't nobody stop you. And then when it comes to me personally voting, I look at these things and see. The only reason I'm making an issue about Kamala Harris and blackness is because if you're not black, if half of your family is Indian and the other half of your family is Scotch-Irish Indian, but you, a lot of those Indians on that Scotch-Irish side, the Indian side, is pretty much a dark or colored Indian, which a lot of Arrow Indians are, can be dark, not the super black kind, but dark kind. When you got people like Miss Nene Finnegan, Nene who's look like she's a, um, a dark Indian that married a Scotch-Irish man, it happens. People multi marry. And if Donald Harris came by that and you literally are not a black woman, but you cosplaying as one, I got a problem with that. You're you're hoodwinking my people, you're bamboozling them. They out here fighting. They're fighting their own people to make you black. And it seemed like this if this is you, you're being the biggest sham in the game, an opportunist in the game, a con artist just like Trump. And you're gonna talk about the prosecutor versus the criminal when you should be prosecuted because you're impersonating a class of people, a culture of people, which is one of the highest crime in the hood that you can be. It's worse than walking around in a police uniform with a badge, asserting your power over people. It's worse than that. You're literally a former police officer. They used to wield your badge, and now you're cosplaying as a black person when your lineage says otherwise, your dad says otherwise. And there's nothing come to surface that we see other than your dad, which we don't hear from no more. We heard from him when you was running for office and you failed and Joe had to rescue you. 
We heard from him then, but we haven't heard from him since then. Where's your Jamaican, where's your black Jamaican cousin? I live in New York and I got friends of mine that's Jamaican all day. They got a man, they got so many Jamaican cousin, cousins and uncles and nieces. Where's yours? Why didn't we don't see, why we don't see Kamala Harris family side talking when Barack Obama was running for office? You saw the Nigerian, I mean, you saw the Kenyan side. You t- we saw his Kenyan grandmother talking about him. We saw his Indonesian family talking about him. We saw all that. But where's your daddy? Where's your cousin? Where's your Jamaican uncles? May they please come forth. Now, I wouldn't doubt that the Democratic Party will hire some actors. That's how hard they want to win. Those are the levels they'll go, man. The reason I am so cynical with politics and the reason why I'm done, I'm only going to listen to my heart and my faith in God when it comes to my vote. I'm not listening to any other chitter chatter. Let me look at your platforms and let me pray over it. And if that platform lines up with the direction of where my faith is and where my faith, my belief system is and, and, and the will of God, that's where I'm going. If it's the will of the devil, do what thy will, the whole of the law, do what you want to do, however you want to do it. I'm not voting for that. And don't leave no restraints. Take the restraints off everybody from grandma to the little kids. I'm not voting for that. I'm not. If you're out here cosplaying, you, the, the curses, you will be cursed for doing that. You don't do that to God's people. Black people are God's people too. If anything, we're the most tied and closest to God than ever before. Because nobody been through the struggle and still forgive and love with God's love like we do. And God don't take that lightly. And if you go around here cosplaying, that's witchery, that's debauchery, that's that's witchcraft. You're trying to control and manipulate people. That is nothing good about that. And no matter how bad you talk about Trump in the eyes of faith, in the eyes of God, you're walking around doing worse things than he could ever do. And I'm not saying that guy's innocent by any means, stretch imagine. I'm not a supporter of him, and I'm not a supporter of Democrat. I'm a supporter of my faith and the God that I believe in. And wherever that leads me to go, that way I go. I ain't embracing progressivism. I'm not embracing conservatism. I'm not even embracing Christianity because some of the people who walk in Christianity is, is using it to the point where God dis- get disappointed. It's like you misusing me too. You neglecting me too. You using me for your own personal gain. I don't want that. And I just went through Kamala Harris's legacy. I went through what her dad said. I went through a, ge- a literal genealogy tree full of Finnegans and Browns. Married folks, not slaves. I went through the legacy of Jamaica and showed you that Jamaican is not just Afro-Black. That is second population is Indian. You got Arrow Indians. You got East Indians. You got various type of Indians. You got Asian. You got Chinese. You got um, Lebanese. So to just assume that Jamaica mean black is stupid. Asinine. So throw that out the window. She always identified as black when? One time. But she sure will ever identify with her Indian hair. Know why? Because she's any end. And no matter where you spend it, majority of her bloodline in it. Well, you know the one drop rule we don't subscribe. What black person subscribe to a white supremacy rule? Why are you embracing the white supremacy rule? The one drop rule is a white supremacy mandate to try to separate black people from everybody else, from them. Did you have one drop, you wasn't white. You wasn't pure. Why are you accepting that? I see Negroes on TV accepting that crap, talking that crap. Shame on you. So you're embracing white supremacist philosophy. Shame on you. And at the end of the day, we got so many people fighting hard for this woman to be black. Let this woman be who she is. Be proud of your inner inherit. Well, I have more respect, more honor for you, and, and, and believable of you if you tell the truth. I know my people, my people are so hungry for a real, real black person to be in office that's going to take care of them. This lady definitely ain't going to do it but she's all about herself. She see herself as a shiny object. Something about her is just off in my spirit. Forget about a record. No, don't forget about a record. Go look at a record. That's enough for me to say no. Looking about, looking at what she's been pushing in the past, that's enough for me to say no. No. I'm trying to get myself back right and right lock stock in my face. At the end of the day, I got an answer to my God. And I got to feel like, did, what did I do? If, if what I did today, do that bring me closer to a loving relationship with God? Do that make me uh, make me feel like I'm doing the will of God? Is this the will of God? Show it. Is it? Does it match and line up with 
with with with his word. I know you guys don't want to hear me talk about that, but that's just me. I'm just my whole point of this. I'm just letting you see inside of me and how I roll. The whole point of this is we. This is something we got to talk about because if this is scammy, if she's really truly being scam scamala Harris, if she's really doing this as a scam leading or she allowing because maybe she's not trying to do this maybe she don't want to do this maybe this is the democratic party telling her to go this route because we need to create a female obama we need to feel we need to create obamala obamala 2.0 we need to create another obama campaign you can't create another obama campaign first of all obama earned he ran against somebody and he's racked up some um states he got some delegates. He went and calm and convinced the super delegates to side with him, and that's how he became. But he ran in the primary. You Negroes don't want no primary. You didn't have a primary. You shut Marion Williamson out. You forced Robert F. Kennedy to go independent. You wouldn't give him no secret servicemen. You stacked the deck in your own party. You're going to talk about democracy and democracy at stake, and you're going to claim yourself to be the pre purveyor or or the, or the lord of democracy, get out of here. You talk about Trump and the Republicans and the way they roll, and you should, but you got to look at yourself in the mirror because the things you're doing in your own party ain't right. And it'd be a shame if you're forcing this lady to be something she's not just because you want to win. And shame on you. Shame on you to manipulate my people like this. And I'm seeing a man, they fighting hard, fighting hard. And at the end of the day, I got a feeling this woman's going to end up being like Rachel Dolezal, a fraud. And I'm telling you now, I haven't seen her say she's black. I haven't seen her um, since the Breakfast Club, but she sure going to take on that Monica to get that black vote. She's going to play the long game because she want those black votes. So she's going to be as close as black as she can without saying I'm black. Saw her on an interview with um, on Luther Campbell. And he, he he went to the blackness question and it was like she was like I ain't no said I was black. I'm not black I'm not I'm not your black <laughs> he mentioned black men you love black men right she was like I can't stand them Negroes <laughs> but vote for me though I could I could take their vote all right I'm done this segment I wanted to get into detail about her lineage it's important to know what stock she come from despite where she her roots is and i showed you her roots she was raised by an indian mother was not raised by her daddy her daddy don't even know what it's like to be a foundational black american man his heritage come from jamaica and i'm quite sure they went through some of the same things we went through but i'm telling you you probably didn't go through the extremities that we had to go through in this country we had to stay here and fight for this country we had to fight these white supremacists we had to um, turn up to get laws changed without voting because a lot of laws that got enacted, major laws, it happened because LBJ did not want no smoke from the community, from the grassroots. It wasn't at the polling booth. It was from the grassroots. You're scared of the grassroots. And the only thing to get done in this society is the grassroots got to get it done. That's why a lot of people are hollering today saying, no black agenda, no vote. And we need to be at every Kamala rally and every Donald Trump rally saying, no black agenda, no vote. Now, I don't want to be out there by myself looking like a fool. But, hey, that's it. Uh, so she come from a line of Finnegan and Brown. It's, it's true. And um, majority, nine times out of ten, she is not black, but the Democratic Party going to force her to be black. Uh, what is she going to do about it? She ain't going to come and tell the truth not with a chance to become president no she's an opportunity she's going to take that chance figure it out later but at the end of the day we're going to find out fake fraud and a part-time broad guarantee now disclaimer i said that because of what i'm seeing my people going my people are going through fighting so hard to make her black i don't give a crap i don't care if you're red i don't care if you're yellow i don't care if you're black i don't care if your party is blue red green brown it doesn't matter i don't care none about that i will give you a shot in heaven if your policies line up to my faith my belief system i don't care who you are i don't care what you've done i gotta have the mentality of god i can't sit here and post judgment against you i can't think about how many times you know fell short of the glory of god how many times you imprison yourself through guilt, condemnation, and shame? How many times people imprison you through guilt, content, con shame? I can't look at that. I got to look at the fact that your platform is the leading, is, is God's platform. God can say, I approve, I support. I gave it to this. I just need you to agree with that. That that right there mean more to me than anything. Your platform is it lined up or is it? Yeah, boy. That's it on Kamala Harris. I'm Bobby Brown with the Bobby Brown Show. 
I'll let you later. Take that as you can. It don't matter what her ethnicity is. It only matters. And I know some people saying, it don't matter. Why y'all making that a big deal? Because she's allowed, either she's doing it as a willing subject or she's allowing the Democratic Party to have her perceive to us that she's sister girl, black magic, Kamala Harris, Sui. Know the hood out here in the streets. You ain't no dog on the street. You're in the street with Doug. You in the street with Doug. Girl, if you don't sit your behind down, I'm out here in the street, girl. I'm out here in the street. You know, you know, these extremists, uh, they ain't like us. Girl, if you don't get out of here with that mess, they ain't like us. You ain't like us. You Scotch Irish Indian. Majority of your makeup is that. You're raised, you were raised up as a Brahmin Indian, a, a, a Indian that looks down on darker color Indians. You were raised that way. Dot in the forehead and all. And it's okay embrace it and use it for the betterment of america since you're here but don't cosplay don't try to hoodwink hood, hood us bamboozles up and most of us you ain't most of us can see right through the bull crap and a lot of time i want to give you the benefit of doubt and say that's not you that's them forcing that on you but you're a willing subject i got a lot of stuff i'm talk about i'm gonna get off this i'm bob brown with the bobby brown show i'll holla at you later pup 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 pup